Good morning. This is another Live with Ghalia edition, and we're talking today about uh, retail in general and retail environments in particular. I'm meeting with Elisa Tefe, who is going to be talking uh, to us about uh, her career, her areas of interest, and uh, in particular, we're going to tackle the issue of retail environments and the importance of retail design with her. Good morning, Elisa. Thank hey, you Gary. for joining me today. <laughs> Thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Elisa, and how did you come across this beautiful topic? Um, so I'm a trained interior architect. Um, I trained here. I'm from Belgium. I trained here in Belgium. Um, and I was very lucky that my first job experience after graduating from interior architecture school um, was with Levi's, Levi's Strauss and Co., the jeans company. Um, their head offices for all of Europe is based here in Brussels. And so um, I joined their retail implementation team as a retail designer. And that really introduced me to the world of retail and what it is. And I really enjoyed this idea of you have a brand and it has its values and it has its identity and you really have to translate that into a physical environment to really bring the story of the brand to the customer. So that was my first experience and I really enjoyed it. Um, and then I moved around a lot. I uh, worked and lived in China for two and a half years, um, but I always continued doing retail. Um, and then I was lucky enough in China to work for a British company uh, that then offered me to move to London. So I uh, lived and worked in London also for three years, um, always again in retail design. And that was a great opportunity. You know, London and retail design, it's quite sure. the place to be. Um, and it's great. What I really enjoyed throughout my career is that I got to work um, in all the aspects of retail design. So I worked mm -hmm. for Levi's, so that's really within the brand structure. Then I worked for a uh, design consultancy where I was implementing Marks and Spencer stores in China, for example. So I wasn't working for Marks and Spencer, but I was doing the design consultancy for them, doing the rollout of all of their stores. And that's a different ballpark because you're still having to respect uh, the brand identity, but you're not working for the brand anymore. You're not within the brand structure, you're working externally. Then when I was in the UK, I worked a lot on shopping centers. And that's also a completely different view on the retail world because you're kind of working for the box that has mm. all of the different brands in it. And the box itself also is a brand when you think about it, because when you look at big shopping centers like Westfield, et cetera, they also have their own brand identity. So you also right. have to create a customer journey and really bring a story to the people who come in the shopping center, but one that cannot erase the identities of each of the smaller um, brand retailers inside of the shopping center. So it was really interesting for me to see all of these different facets of it. Um, then, yeah, I, I decided I wanted to be closer to my family. So I came back to Belgium um, and I worked for another agency here. Um, but I got a bit frustrated after London <laughs> because obviously Belgium the is the dynamic a change. <laughs> It's not the same level of, uh, of passion for retail, I think, or it's a little bit behind in a lot of ways. Um, so I decided I wanted a new challenge and I had 10 years of experience behind me. So I thought, OK, maybe now I can start teaching. And in um, Belgium, in Hasselt, we have um, Hasselt University, which is one of the only universities in the world that actually has a specific program um, teaching retail design. And we have a retail design lab, which is the only one in the world where we do research on retail design. So I got in contact with them and I asked them, well, do you have a job opening for a teacher? And they said, maybe not a teacher, but we have um, a scholarship for a PhD student. How about you try and do that? And my mind was a bit blown. I was like, I can be a doctor of retail. <laughs> what? Um, but, um, but I saw it as a great opportunity. Um, I'm, I'm a big thinker. So for me, I always like to take time to think about things. And as you know, as an interior architect, you don't always have time to think. Right. Right. You have right. deadlines, you have clients waiting. So I saw it as an opportunity to, um, to delve into my passion in a bit more of a an in-depth way without the pressure of like the timelines. Yeah. Yes. 
So because I'm now at the last stage of it, um, and uh, and I really enjoyed it. And the topic was um, in-store experience. So it's really on the focusing on trying to understand how, from a practicing retail designer point of view, we can create store experiences that have value for everyone. Wow! So, yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Mind-blowing experience. I mean, uh, thank you for sharing that, Elisa. And um, the, the way you put it is something uh, extraordinary um, in our experiences because uh, on one hand, you got to understand the dynamic of the market. And on the other hand, now you are uh, in that place where, you're, where you are uh, having the time to think why and how uh, that, that dynamic is there or can be uh, induced in a certain manner. And more importantly, uh, when you arrive towards the end of that experience, you ended up uh, by focusing on the customer, which is, I believe, at the heart of any experience. Certainly, uh, at first, when we're designing um, a retail environment, we are respecting the brand or the brand value, whether, whether it was a mono brand or a brand englobing other brands, right? But... Yeah. Uh, today, we're talking more about that customer experience and how uh, we think about creating a better one and a different one. We'll tackle that in a moment. But first of all, uh, can we try to define what retail design is and what are retail uh, environments in relation to retail design? Well, it's um, that's something we teach our students. What is retail design? What's the difference between interior architecture and uh, retail design? Because our students um, come from, uh, they trained as, as bachelors in interior architecture. So when they come to us, we have to tell them, okay, what's the difference between retail design? What makes it specific? And as you said it very well, it's about at the start of the project when you're an interior architect is the space. At the start of a project when you're a retail designer is the brand. Um, so that's the main difference. And we always try to keep that clear for them that they are, it's the opposite of, of an, uh, a private project where you, you make the, um, you use the space as a priority in retail design, the space needs to fit the brand. So we will not let the space overtake the brand. The brand comes first and that comes with the customer. So as a retail designer, you have two clients, you have the paying client who is the retailer. And then you have the user client who is the customer and you have to really navigate both of them. You have a brand identity that you have to put in the store, but then you also have the customer with his expectations, his ways of circulating a store and they're completely different people and being, and you have to navigate the needs of both of them. Um, so for me, retail design really revolves around these two things. The, the fact that the brand is at the core and not the space, although mm -hmm. we are still space designers, we can't let the space get to us, if that makes sense. Yeah. So even if I have a beautiful building with, you know, old architectural features in it, if the brand, if it doesn't make sense for the brand to display them, then we have to hide them. And sometimes that breaks your heart. But at the end of the day, what makes a good retail design project is how well it represents the brand and how well it matches the customer expectations. And so if the space needs to be sacrificed a bit for that, then that's what we have to do. Um, so right. that's the first thing we try to teach our students. <laughs> I think. It's a different mindset uh, of design. Um, it's really um, a marketing mindset. And that's something that we try to, to bring a little bit to architecture. <laughs> Yeah, you have to marry marketing and interior architecture, basically. Okay, interesting. And if I if I look back at how um, the space was designed and drawn uh, maybe a couple of decades ago versus today, we have seen that um, the space is changing. It's becoming less of a sellable space. Uh, Space and more of an interactive space. Mm -hmm. uh, how how are these elements uh, related to customer and um, customer experience within the store affecting also uh, retail design? 
Well, so it all, I mean, I did a lot of research on this, obviously, because it's a topic of my, my PhD. Um, so it, it's all related to what we call the experience economy. So uh, we really see that in, in the history of, of economy, you had first, uh, you know, the product, and then it started to be a focus on services. And all of a sudden now the focus is on experience. So people, you, me, everyone, we're all now looking for meaningful experiences in everything that we live. Um, and that kind of blurs back boundaries between things as well because now you see hotels having shops and museums having shops and we enjoy shopping in environments that weren't necessarily shopping before but what that means is that we also expect that the shopping is an experience it's not just I get in I get my product I get out we still need some of that sometimes depending on what we're looking for but most of the time we are looking for an experience and that is also related to obviously the development of online shopping Convenience now, you can get it online. If you're going to make the effort to go to a physical store, then you want more. That's the whole idea of this more. What is the more? And it's this experience, but it has to be an experience that brings you value. And that's really what I did research on is, okay, well, I'm an architect, interior architect. And as you said yourself before, 10 years ago, it was easy for me to design a store because it was all about the product. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was okay. self-explanatory, right? <laughs> I just need to put yes. racks and furniture yes. that I put my products in. Now yes. it's all about how can I deliver an experience to my customer? And the research that I did really shows that it's all about coherence between the brand and the customer again. So the first things you really need to do is understand who your brand is and understand who your customer is. And once you have these elements, then you can design an experience that makes sense for them. Because what we've also seen is that retailers tend to get carried away a little bit with this new experiential boom <laughs> and also um, technical technological developments. It's easy to want to implement technology in a store, but sometimes it doesn't actually make sense for your brand or for your customer. And then you're creating an experience that actually is counterproductive because it's not meeting the expectations mm -hmm. so my research really i tried to develop a tool which I, I actually did um which tries to bear that in mind throughout the whole reflection process so it asks a lot of questions about who is your brand who is your customer and then about your in-store experience and tries to always remind you okay don't forget it needs to be coherent don't yeah. make an experience for the sake of experience make an experience for your brand and for your customer. So relevancy, make... relevancy is key and it, it, it always has to make sense to create that extra value for that customer uh, getting in touch with that particular brand. Exactly. But then comes that uh, difference between uh, several types of channels that require different types of retail design. Today we're having our traditional physical boutique Okay, we talked about flagship stores and concept stores at a certain uh, point, and then came along all the ephemeral and temporary stores, and I raised the flag. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. And I would say, wow, there are lots of things happening in terms of design between different types of stores, and keeping in mind that we are designing for the same brand. What, what's your take on that? Well, for me, again, my take is that it's really important for every store to be a bit different. It's not because you have a brand that all of your stores should be the same. Again, people are looking for meaningful experiences wherever they go. If they're looking, it depends on your customer, of course. I'm talking again for a customer who is seeking experience because you have customers who seek more convenience. If that's the case, don't do an experience. It makes no sense. You're just going to frustrate them. The experience should be focused on the product, on making sure that they have good service, but that's it. Get them to be happy coming in, getting their mission done, getting out. But when we're looking at shoppers that are more fun seeking, that are more experience seeking, then they're going to want to be wowed and they're going to want more yeah. in every visit. And what that means is that every single retail environment, even for the same brand, needs to be a bit different. So for me, I actually see 
wonderful things in different formats because there is such an opportunity to focus on different things and bring them a different experience every time. A pop-up format is great for doing activations of specific products or for focusing on a specific um, customer catchment. So if you are in a city, then you know that's really urban and that's really maybe um, university driven, then you can focus on that customer specifically and just highlight an offer for that customer specifically, even though your whole brand's offer is much wider. Mm -hmm. So I really see, um, and, and this is what I hope with my tool as well, is that a brand shouldn't, yeah, always do the same and shouldn't just do the status quo of, yeah, the, the years of the rollout basically for me are over. We shouldn't really be doing that anymore. Um, you can't keep a core and you should keep a core of the brand identity that is the same. But every store should tell a different story because, mm -hmm. again, if you are addressing a fun, experiential shopper, this is what they want. They want yes. to be able to live something different in every store. And we are seeing that, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, with major luxury or premium or luxury brands who are today um, focusing on contextualizing their stores and the design of these stores, might as well the product that comes along, uh, to the geographical context and the mm -hmm. cultural context. And this is something that we didn't see before. So does it relate to what you are also going to yeah, be advising totally. on with your tool? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we do uh, mention localization, globalization. How do you, how do you take a global brand and make it local? <laughs> yes. Um, and this being said, um, are we seeing a certain trend trying to mesh up uh, the brand's retail format and making it more integrated into uh, the local retail environment? Um, I, I'm seeing uh, a kind of or a hint that is transforming our retail spaces into third spaces. Does it does it make sense? Of course, of course. Um, and I think a lot of people now are sort of expecting that they, there is a growing. I think especially the COVID pandemic also impacted that people have found a sense of place at home. Um, we were stuck at home for a while, and so there is now this pride as to where you come from and wanting to also maybe shop more local and that is a challenge for global brands because how do you fight with the corner shop butcher <laughs> you know so um there is this challenge now to say okay we are a global brand but we still respect your local identity so how can we do that and we have seen a lot of big retailers that have tried to really um, create, as you say, a third place where um, maybe a community space is integrated in the store. And so they can have events that are more local driven uh, happen in a store that in a brand that initially wasn't necessarily local at all. So I think there's great, um, I've seen, I mean, I'm a, I'm a positive thinker. <laughs> And I think the COVID pandemic was awful, um, but from a retail design perspective, I do feel that it had great impact because it really, um, it challenged retailers a lot to rethink. Yeah. Um, and so I'm very excited about the period that we're in now. I don't know about you, but for me, I really see so many new things happening and um, a lot more focus on trying to deliver meaningful experiences and different formats and being more meaningful in general. Right. I believe that we were liberated from uh, the formatted um, uh, shopping experience before, <laughs> before going into even the retail experience. And things became more natural in the sense that uh, they blend in with our uh, with our, I mean, customers' life, uh, and gave it more meaning. It, mm -hmm. um, the shopping experience became less stressful. I believe that what we what we taught our students, like uh, how customers shop, how they behave, how their journey starts, etc., mm -hmm. it is there in the back of our minds. But now it has become more lenient, and mm -hmm. uh, it 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 got um, so many options for the customers to choose from and thus created many types of outlets uh, that customers could also uh, go to to acquire what they need and uh, live out the experience that they want. Um, Elisa, could we, uh, now if we want to uh, get 
some insights to our managers or retailers who uh, would like to focus on the idea of developing uh, or giving more value to their brand through retail design. What are the elements uh, that they always should think about uh, when developing these types of projects? Uh, so again, I developed a tool for that. So if they want, they can always get in touch with the retail design lab and we'll gladly help them in detail. But it's a very, it's a very detailed tool. So I mean, uh, it comprises 53 questions. So just to give you an idea, that means that for us, there are 53 topics that you should consider before you design your store to make sure that it can bring value. Um, that being said, those 53 topics are really broken down into five sections. And the first one is the brand. So within the brand, you really need to reflect on a lot of things. Um, but the most important is obviously what makes your brand specific versus other brands. That's the most important. So why, why you, who are you, why are you unique and how can you translate that into your retail environment? The second section is obviously who your customer is. Again, who is your customer? And the more specific you can be here, the better, because that's really going to impact. I mean, the age of we're designing a store for everyone is behind us. We cannot yeah, do that yeah. because you're just going to end up frustrating people. So again, um, this is something that we also do with our students is we really invite them to work with personas. Um, and I'm sure you, you've done this exercise as well, where you kind of do a little ID card of who this person is. And again, the more relatable you can make them, the better. I remember uh, one of our students, um, we were working on um, the Belgian uh, football stadium, uh, a fan shop for the Belgian football stadium. And they had a persona whose name was Jim, who was a fritkot owner. A fritkot is a, fr a French fry in Belgium. We eat a lot of fries. Um, so we have these little houses that just make fries and he, they were, they had made such a wonderful persona that we, you know, for us, this was Jim's group, you know, whenever we were seeing this group of students, it was always Jim's group. And we had the image of this guy who was the frit cut owner, who was a football fan with this scarf around his neck, you know, and that makes it so much more relatable that then you can really design a store specifically for that person putting yourself in that person's shoe. So um, that's really the, the best thing to do. So the customer is the second. The third is your offer and service. So, okay, as a retail designer, I really need to know which type of products you're selling. How are you splitting them within a store? And what kind of additional services do you offer with them? Because mm. nowadays services play a really important role um, in terms of customer expectations. So, you also need to have a space to implement them within a store. We have more and more hybrid stores where you have a restaurant offer. Okay, how are we going to operate that? Even like practically speaking, how do you operate a restaurant within a boutique that sells clothes? It's, it's operationally uh, different staffs, even different training. So how do you manage that? Is it, is it like a partner that you have within the store that works for you and that does that? Or do you yourself have two different staff teams that are trained differently and how do you manage that so these are an, an, an interior architect has a little bit less impact on how I'm going to design the store but I still need to know about it because obviously it will impact also the being without within the store etc so that's number three yeah. number four is the physical space itself um, are there constraints linked to the location are there constraints linked to the interior of the store um, things like natural light nowadays are really important for customers. And these are mm -hmm. still things that 10 years ago, we weren't even considering natural yeah. light, who cares? Yeah. All we yeah. cared about was the light on the product. You know what I right. mean? But nowadays right. there are really expectations that you bring in natural light. So how are you going to manage that? All of these aspects. And then the last one is something that I've called the unexpected factor. So as I've mentioned, people want more. What is this more? How do you work on the more? And so I ask some questions relating to this, and that is really related to trends. Mm. Which trends are important to your brand? Um, who are your competitors and how do you differentiate yourself from them? Uh, mm -hmm. Where do you see your store within five years? Because that's mm -hmm. already something that we should integrate in the store now to try yeah. and figure it out. What is the frequency of visit of your customers? Because if they want something more every time, then that means that maybe if they come to the store every month, then your store should be different every month. So that also has an impact on the flexibility of your store design. You can't have furniture that is so fixed 
because you need to have some flexibility every month to be able to shake things up so that yeah. your returning customer has a different experience every time. Right. So that's the last bubble if you want. So it's really kind of like a bubble diagram that I made that has these five little things in it. So those are the five key topics that you can focus on. And then, as I said, for each one, there's a list <laughs> that we redefined um, and we can help brands go through those lists with, uh, with, uh, with us if they want. Mm -hmm. But as a, as a little introduction, I would say those are the, the five key things to keep in mind. Um, and the most important is the coherence. So yeah. brand customer coherence. Because what we have seen, and this is the last thing I'll say, is that um, it's really easy as a retail designer and as a retailer to get carried away when you design a store. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you can have a brand that's really uh, got a practical offer and whose customer is really, again, task focused. You know, they want to get in, they want to get out. But when you're designing a store, you always want to make it pretty. You always want to make it nice and you want to make... And yeah, an experience. And so what we've seen is that people get carried away with digital elements and with wanting to have an additional service where maybe it doesn't make sense. So I would say, again, coherence, 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 make sure that you are really sticking through throughout the whole process. Always ask yourself the question, does it make sense for my brand? Does it make sense for my customer? And try not to get carried away with your creative side yes, wants yes. to come up. <laughs> the artistic, the artistic side. But and, and to, to conclude, I believe that uh, the takeaway message should re, should re, be relating really uh, retail design to the brand in a holistic way. Uh, retail design is not anymore a dissociated element. It is within the brand and it should uh, be relevant to the brand and the customer to create that desired uh, outcome or that value. Uh, Elisa, before concluding, uh, where can we get access to more information about your work or your research and how can we access or get in touch with the Retail Design Lab? So we do have a website. <laughs> it's very easy. It's retaildesignlab.be. Uh, so you can find all of the information um, on the website. Um, most of it is um, in Dutch, but we are translating almost everything in English and hopefully soon also in French. That's my next mission. Um, so we are trying to have more outreach. And on there, you will find some tools for retailers and also some tools for retail designers. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really trying to aim um, to bring insight to both parties. Um, and you will find there all of the information um, from my research, but also uh, my contact information. So if you want to get in touch, don't hesitate. <laughs> Super. Thank you so much, Elisa. It was very insightful and very enriching. And I hope that uh, we can meet again on uh, other topics related to retail and retail design. Thank you so much. And for everyone um, who um, uh, are joining us here, uh, the, um, this recording will be available on YouTube and relate on LinkedIn and on Instagram. Thank you so much, Elisa, and have a nice day. Thank you, Galia. Thanks a lot. See you soon.